Ireland. A witch. And the Civil War. What do all of these share? A part of Mary Black's life. Mary Black emigrated from Ireland to Lawrence County in pioneer times. She was widowed and lived alone with her cat on the fringe of society. And residents would describe her existence as anything but natural. They say she possessed the ability to shapeshift into beastly forms and create potions cultivated from herbs in the deep woods. Back then, people claimed Mary Black was a witch and she still haunts Lawrence County today. I am Joe Ritchie, I'm a Newcastle native, and I grew up with the stories of Mary Black. According to legend, if you were to look into a mirror and say Bloody Mary three times, she would appear and scratch your eyes out. However, in the city of Newcastle, this transformed into something more. Mary Black was more than just an apparition in a mirror. She had the ability to steal you out of your bed, or even take your soul in the form of a cat on the street. Near the Tyndall Cemetery, it's a hotbed of superstition and supernatural. Just within the area, you have a cemetery that's all dug up. You have unknown murders that occurred within that area, and you have one of the most haunted cemeteries. How is it that all of these can occur within the same vicinity of Mary Black's grave? Statistically, Newcastle is a hot spot for criminal activity, which could cause one to ask, does the crime rate of Newcastle correlate to the formation of superstitions such as Mary Black, the Green Man, the horrors at Jameson Hospital, or even the alleged presence of Indian burial grounds outside the city? So when you look at a picture of Mary Black, she's frowning, she's in all black, she looks kind of menacing. All of these are the same characteristics that you would perceive as a common day witch. I, Mary Black, widow, residing in the village of Newport, Big Beaver Township, Lawrence County, Pennsylvania, being of sound mind and good health, yet realizing that life is short and death sure, and liable to come to me at any moment, I therefore make and publish this my last will and testament. To my three daughters and to my son, I bequeath to each the sum of one dollar to help aid to them in money, and they are to have nothing more except to my daughter, Margaret Douglas. I bequeath my large copper kettle, and I give, bequeath, and devise to my grandson, Charles Reinhardt, my house and the lands belonging thereto. I have signed and sealed and published and declared this will, done at Newport, Lawrence County, Pennsylvania, on this 20th day of April, 1881. Signed, Mary Black. Within Mary Black's will, you'll see that she gives a dollar to each of her children, but then she leaves her whole estate and everything to her grandson. So why might that be? Many times, I've heard rumors about her. Coming out of her grave at 12 o'clock midnight, I never really believed in it then. And just for fun, we went to see her. We walked for a while up a pathway through the woods. It was 15 or 20 minutes before midnight when we started walking. My girlfriend Debbie and two others were with me. The men each had a flashlight. I saw to my left the tombstone. We started walking towards it. It's as if I was being guided by Mary Black herself. I saw the tombstone there. I saw 
Fuck too. I really don't like these guys. Then when we got there, it turned out to be a tree trunk. The scratches on me were bleeding for a little while, and I had the marks on me for about three months. Why did this happen? I don't really know. Is it because people have disturbed her resting place? Or could it be another area of the devil's playground? All right, so Harry the Hermit, um, his name was Harry Stein, and he lived in the general area of the Tyndall Cemetery, uh, which was still, you know, the name Harry the Hermit indicates that he lived, you know, an isolated life. Uh, during the 1950s, he was a talented story writer. He wrote folklore and a lot of scary stories that teenagers at the time were entertained by. Um, and would often come to him um, to hear these spooky stories. He was a commoner of this area that everyone went to visit and bring cigarettes and beer to. And he would always sit there and tell them s stories. So up and down the stairs. I... So one of the stories that Harry wrote was Memoirs of a Backcountry School. And the characters in this particular story were children, uh, children that would frequent graveyards in the region. And uh, these graveyards were places where the supernatural oftentimes met the natural world. In one chapter of Harry's book, he re refers to the immortal Lisa Sterner. Um, and that character is associated with witchcraft and a black cat. So obviously, um, this is a play on the Mary Black story, and the immortal Lisa Sterner seems to be a character born from Mary Black. He actually coined the whole story of Mary Black. Now, he didn't say her name outright, but eventually the story came to fruition where her name was associated with the story, and then all of the kids in town picked up on that and then went to visit Mary Black's gravesite in the Tyndall Cemetery. We're talking about the genesis of Mary Black uh, becoming a witch. Um, this was a creation of Harry Stein. So, to the community, Mary Black becomes a witch only because of those stories, both the ones that were written and the oral stories that, that he would tell. I don't think that, that um, there was anything immoral, so to speak, about him taking someone's name and creating a story about it. Um, I think that what is immoral is the way that people have handled those stories. You know, this is folklore gone to extremes. And it's in the reaction of people, and not the stories themselves, because the, the stories were never created to harm anyone. I really can't blame the devastation that happened generations later on a fictional story that was only made to entertain a bunch of kids. I, I believe that, that Mary Black was just simply um, a, a good starting point for a story. That's all. So where is Mary Black now? On March 20th, 1888, she was buried in Tyndall Cemetery. And eventually, following Harry's stories, the kids who heard these stories went to the cemetery and dug them up out of morbid curiosity. And eventually, people reported that her bones were found during a satanic ritual in West Pittsburgh, or her bones were found in Votex parking lot. So where are the bones? 
of Mary Black. that it's between the two of them. Okay. Because if we get to the first swamp, we it's, We were right here. Okay, okay. And we need to go a little more. Yeah, we'll just, go, let's go this way and just muscle our way through okay. if we can, okay? That sounds good. Yeah. I think we should take the lower road here because the, the jagger bushes are pretty thick up there. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, okay. I think sure. this works. And and here we have a, uh, they've left us a bread breadcrumb. <laughs> so we know we're going in the right direction. Yeah, it's gotta be right on the other side there. It's just hard getting from I this point this to there. I was going to try to go up, but the way to skirt around this yeah. stuff. Well, the, the growth of the swamp might, might deter people that are coming here to, to vandalize the area from, from showing up. So yeah. trailblazer, we're back on. Yeah, we actually do have a trail up here. So after a little uh, heavy duty trailblazing, uh, we found our way back on the original trail. What's happened over the years is the trail has been filled in really, and you can see it over my shoulder here uh, with the swamp. The swamp used to be much smaller the last time I came out here, and now it's grown uh, to a, a really a, a serious barrier uh, to getting out here, but we're back on the trail. We're nearing the end of it. Yeah, we did. Hi, Mary Black, right here. There's one of the holes. How sad. Which name is that? Well, well, Andrew, oh, wow. there's a hole in the ground, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Somebody was digging. And there's supposedly 30 burials in here. 30? That's, that's what I had read. Yeah. You know what that is, right? Grandfather. Yeah. Somebody's excavated that. It's Baldwin. Yeah. Abraham Baldwin. Um, it, Baldwin was buried here. Nancy was buried here. But also their son Age 10 weeks. Oh, wow. When born August. Yeah. 19, yeah. He died 88. Yes. And the, the same year that Mary Black died, actually. And then, and then William, the baby, 10 weeks old, is oh, here, wow. too. Now, Does it Nancy say on Baldwin it? died nine days after Mary Black did. Mm -hmm. Oh, he found another one. Oh, shoot. That's a big one. See? That is yeah, breadcrumb. Yeah, drinking back here. Bro. Yeah. This one dug up as well. This looks like the corner piece to, to another one, too. Yeah. That's definitely. It's carved, too. Yeah, carved. That's definitely one. An In indentation. Yeah. Yeah. How does feel, Bob? You are, too. How do you feel about that? You are too. I'm wondering this is if this is just natural subsidence a little bit, or so if, yeah, or if somebody started digging at it, yeah. that That's, in there. Yeah. So it looks like it's something big enough that somebody could have picked up and walked away with. I think stone-wise, that's all we're gonna find.
if you go to the Lawrence County Historical Society and you go down the stairs and open the door to the basement, you walk to the back of the room and there you will find Mary Black's tombstone. Mary Black's tombstone was brought to the Lawrence County Historical Society in the 1980s after the cops found that the tombstone was being used for satanic rituals. So now, here at the Historical Society, we keep Mary Black's tombstone safe in the basement. So as the story went, people actually came out to this place to seek her out, and this became a party area. And from a party area, look what we have today. Yeah. So it escalated over the years and got worse. Uh, and, and in the late 1980s, you know, this, this happened. The stone was removed and the body was, was taken out of the ground. And, and um, the, the good thing is that the authorities brought the stone to the Historical Society for safekeeping. Good thing yeah. that it wasn't just brought back here. It would have been a repeat offense, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But this is where we're at because of a story. And, and like I've said before, folklore is fun. We can learn a lot about it too. You can learn a lot about your community from folklore, but it grows. It's like a snowball that grows every generation, builds on it. And in extreme cases, we have situations like this, yes. where instead of a, a graveyard here, we've got a bunch of holes in the ground um, that should be hallowed ground and uh, not holes in the ground. Yeah. It's a teaching moment. You know, don't let stories like this um, um, uh, spiral out of control, and especially maybe with social media today that things catch fire really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, look to the truth. You know, don't, don't jump the speculations and, and, and um, um, use common sense. My name is Joanne Blockley Wetzel, and I am one of the many descendants of Mary Black. She would be my great, 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 great grandmother. That's four greats, count them. <laughs> um, but you know, uh, Harry the Hermit made it personal. You know, he, uh, he picked out a name, and because of that particular uh, singling out, that spec specificity on his part, uh, you know, he really changed. Uh, he changed some of the history, I believe, associated with Mary Black, and probably not for the better. Um, I love scary stories. Do I believe them? No, I don't. Because we have science now, we can account for all of that, uh, for those things that go bump in the night. I think uh, the human factor and what humans do to each other is much scarier than anything that the supernatural could come up with. Uh, yeah, I, I think that if I could uh, speak to anyone passing on scary stories and, and uh, people who are um, digging around in history, the, I think that the idea is uh, to try to keep it historically accurate. You know, if you want to make up fantasy stories, great, but please don't um, associate your stories with real historical people who lived and died and who were good, hardworking people people and, and, and don't deserve to be associated in a negative way. I guess the easiest way to describe her, she was uh, 87 years old when she died in 1888. 1888. She had a husband, she had, a, had children, and upwards of, was it purposely eight? Nine children? I think nine children. One of them passed away before she immigrated to, uh, from Ireland. Yes. Um, born in 1801, died in 1888. Mm -hmm. And um, the thing is, she, had, she lived a normal life. Um, in fact, um, she had 
three children that fought in the Civil War. One died in a, in a, um, a prisoner of war camp, hmm. you know, so um, they were a pioneer, a pioneer family, you know, patriotic. Husband worked on the railroad, or the um, digging the canals, building the canals. Uh, what you would consider a pretty typical pioneer family. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess that when you talk about her past, she really wasn't a witch. Just a typical lady in the uh, uh, 19th century. Mm -hmm.